What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the brachial plexus and the lumbosacral plexus. We had review videos on the anatomy of the head, anatomy of the neck, neuroanatomy, anatomy of the thorax, anatomy of the abdomen, of the pelvis and perineum, anatomy of the upper extremities and of the lower extremities. Today, we shall talk about your carotid arteries. This is the common carotid artery, which branches into an internal carotid artery and an external carotid artery. At the bifurcation site, there is a carotid body in a carotid sinus. The carotid body has chemoreceptors, whereas the carotid sinus has baroreceptors, both of which are under the control of the vagus nerve or the 10th cranial nerve. Click the like button, click the subscribe button before I massage both of your carotids simultaneously. Of course, I'm not gonna do this to you because I love you. Don't ever massage both carotids at the same time. If you do so, you send a signal to the bare receptors that the blood pressure is too high. So what does the body do? It causes the opposite. Reflex bradycardia and reflexive vasodilation. This can lead to fainting and sometimes death. Never ever massage both carotid arteries at the same time. All of this fancy schmancy area is your neck. This bone above is the mandible. This is the base of the skull, particularly the basilar part of the occipital bone. This is the sternum or the manubrium sterni. And this is the clavicle, this is the scapula. What was the name of the cranial nerve that emerged between the styloid process and the mastoid process? The neck is made of a bunch of cervical vertebrae, as we have discussed in the previous video. What's unique about the cervical vertebrae is that they have foramen transversarium, or a foramen inside the transverse process. This is the transverse process of the cervical vertebra. It has an anterior tubercle, and a posterior tubercle, and a foramen transversarium through which the vertebral artery passes. This is true for C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6. All of them form a canal, so to speak, for the vertebral arch. But C7 is different. C7 has a foramen transversarium, but it's for accessory vertebral vein and not a vertebral artery. And we talked about that in the previous video. This video is just a free sample of the original discussion on anatomy of the neck and anatomy of the head quick review. In my anatomy playlist, you will find review videos for the upper extremities, lower extremities of the thorax, of the abdomen, of the pelvis and perineum, neuroanatomy and embryology. Even better, if you go to my playlist titled in 90 minutes quick review, you will find that every region in anatomy is covered in three videos. Part one is quick review, part two is ultimate review, and part three is clinically oriented anatomy for that region. So I have a video quick review of the thorax, I have a video ultimate review of the thorax, and I have a video on the clinically oriented anatomy of the thorax, and I repeated the same process for every branch in anatomy, including neuroanatomy and embryology. But wait, there is more. I also have review videos for physiology, review videos for biochemistry, review videos for molecular biology, genetics, pharmacology, pathology. I cannot forget microbiology. There is a review video for general micro, one for the gram positives, another for the gram negatives, another for viruses, another for fungi, and another for human parasites. I cannot forget internal medicine, so cardiology is reviewed in two videos, neuro, two videos, pulmonology, endocrinology, hematology, oncology, immunology, rheumatology, nephrology, all of these. If you want to review videos on these subjects, please let me know in the comments. And I have surgery review videos as well, as well as pediatrics, obstetrics, and gynecology. You can find this review videos in my playlist titled In 90 Minutes Quick Review. Today we'll talk about the arterial supply of the head and neck, i.e. the carotids. For the full discussion on the anatomy of the head and anatomy of the neck, please refer to my anatomy playlist or to my in 90 minutes quick review playlist. Today we'll talk about the carotids and the thyroid arteries. I'll cover the subclavian artery with its three parts in the next video in this anatomy playlist. And the video after that will be about the maxillary artery. 
We do this every time because a repetition is the mother of pedagogy. The apex of the heart is formed by the left ventricle. The left ventricle has oxygenated blood. The left ventricle has a cavity and it has an outflow tract. The outflow tract is going to lead you to the aorta. Ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending thoracic aorta, pierce the diaphragm, or more accurately, pass behind the diaphragm at the level of T12 to enter into the abdomen and become the abdominal aorta by a verbal sleight of hand. The ascending aorta has a sinus, and this sinus will give me right coronary artery and left coronary artery. That's the ascending aorta. Then the aortic arch will give me brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. There you go. This is the ascending aorta, right coronary artery, and left coronary artery. The left coronary artery will then divide into left anterior descending and left circumflex. But I digress. Back to the aortic arch. It has the brachiocephalic artery, it has the left common carotid, and the left subclavian. The brachiocephalic artery itself will divide into right subclavian and right common carotid. This is the right vagus nerve. This is the left vagus nerve. The right vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10, after descending that much, it forgot something. Oh, I forgot to give the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So we'll give the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which will loop around and below the right subclavian on the right side. But the left vagus is different. It also forgot the recurrent laryngeal, and then it remembered to give the recurrent laryngeal that will arch below the aortic arch, just near the ligamentum arteriosum. Formerly, ductus arteriosus. A ductus arteriosus is a duct between two arteries, the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Here is the aortic arch, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid, left subclavian, brachiocephalic will then give me right subclavian and right common carotid. Right common carotid will become external carotid and internal carotid. That's on the right side. On the left side, the left common carotid will also divide into left internal carotid and left external carotid. The internal carotids are for the brain, the external carotids are for the face, basically. At the bifurcation of the common carotid into external and internal, we see the carotid sinus. Carotid sinus contains baroreceptors. The carotid body contains chemoreceptors. Both the baroreceptors and the chemoreceptors in the carotid sinus are supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the ninth cranial nerve. However, the chemoreceptors and baroreceptors in the aortic arch are supplied by vagus because the vagus nerve comes close to the aortic arch before it remembers to give its recurrent laryngeal nerve. A quick correction about this picture. This picture shows the carotid sinus at the root of the external carotid. This is not accurate. This carotid sinus and the carotid body should be at the root of the internal carotid, not the external carotid. So sorry about that. This picture has it right. The carotid body and carotid sinus should be at the root of the internal carotid, not the external carotid. The brachiocephalic artery will then give me right subclavian and right common carotid. The common carotid will give me external carotid and internal carotid. The left common carotid will also give me internal and external carotids. This is the trapezius. This is the midline of the neck. This is the sternocleidomastoid. Behind the sternocleidomastoid, there's the posterior triangle. In front of it, there is the anterior triangle of the neck. This is the omohyoid muscle, from the scapula to the hyoid bone. It has a dirty intermediate tendon that attaches to the clavicle by a double sling. Connective tissue wraps around connective tissue. Back to the clavicle. This is the brachiocephalic artery, this is right subclavian, this is right common carotid. The right common carotid will give me right internal carotid for the brain and right external carotid for the face. The internal carotid has five branches. The two most important ones are anterior cerebral and middle cerebral. The external carotid artery has eight branches. I just want you to remember two for now. One internal, one external. The internal one is the deeper one. That's the maxillary artery. The more superficial one is the facial artery. This is the facial artery. From the subclavian artery, we see this vertebral artery. You see it passes through the foramina transversarium of C6, C5, C4, C3, C2, and C1. But it does not pass through C7's transverse foramen. The anterior circulation of the brain is supplied by the internal carotid, whereas the posterior circulation of the brain is supplied by the vertebral artery. Two vertebral arteries join forces to give me this basilar artery. 
The basilar artery has many branches. The final ones are posterior cerebral arteries. So now we know where the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, and posterior cerebral came from. ACA and MCA from the internal carotid, PCA from the basilar, which came from the vertebral. Why do we call the basilar artery basilar? Because it runs on the basis pontus, or the base of the pons. Also because it's located at the base of the brain. Back to the common carotid artery. It will give us two terminal branches. External carotid artery for the face and internal carotid artery for the brain. This is external carotid artery. It has eight branches. What are the two terminal branches? Maxillary artery and superficial temporal artery. What are the eight branches of the external carotid? Superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, facial artery. All of these are from the anterior aspect. From the posterior aspect, we have occipital artery and posterior auricular artery. From the medial aspect or the inner aspect of the external carotid, we have the ascending pharyngeal artery for the pharynx. The two terminal branches of the external carotid are the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery. Don't forget that the superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid, whereas the inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the first part of subclavian artery. This is the external carotid artery. This is superior thyroid artery. This is lingual artery, which is very tortuous because your tongue moves a lot because you talk too much. And this is facial artery. Also tortuous because you're gonna turn your head to the left, to the right, etc. These are the branches of the anterior aspect. Then we have occipital artery and posterior auricular artery from the posterior aspect of the external carotid. Not shown here is the ascending pharyngeal artery. The two terminal branches are the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal. This is the external carotid artery, this is the maxillary artery, and this is the superficial temporal artery, the two terminal branches of the external carotid. The maxillary artery has three parts. We'll talk about them in detail in my video titled Maxillary Artery. Next, remember the internal carotid artery which disrespected itself and disrespected the cavernous sinus and was disrespected by the sympathetic nerves? It will give us five branches. We have anterior cerebral, we have middle cerebral, we have ophthalmic artery, and then we have anterior choroidal and posterior communicating. Let's talk about the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of the internal carotid artery. We're very closely related to the optic nerve. Both the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery enter the orbit through the orbital foramen or orbital canal. The ophthalmic artery is responsible for giving me the lacrimal artery, which is lateral to the lacrimal gland. It also gives me zygomatic branches for your lovely zygoma. Next, a bunch of muscular branches for the muscles of the eye, the extraocular muscles. Then some ethmoidal arteries near the ethmoid bone, anterior ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal. It will also give us this supraorbital artery and this supratrochlear artery or medial palpebral. And we shall never ever ever forget that the ophthalmic artery is the one that gave us the central artery of the retina or the central retinal artery, which passes within the substance of the optic nerve itself. The ophthalmic artery will also give us posterior and anterior ciliary arteries. Question, what's the name of this muscle that passes through the trochlea? If you say superior oblique, you're absolutely correct. And that's why it's supplied by the trochlear nerve. Don't forget that the trochlea is medial, but the lacrimal gland is lateral. The supratrochlear artery is more medial to the supraorbital. Arterial supply of the scalp, supraorbital and supratrochlear. Don't forget that the supratrochlear is more medial. Both of them are branches of the ophthalmic artery, which is a branch of the internal carotid. And the superficial temporal, posterior auricular and occipital arteries. All three are branches of the external carotid artery. The face is supplied by facial artery and by branches of superficial temporal as well. The nose is supplied by anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries sphenopalatine artery and greater palatine artery. And there is also a septal artery here, which came from superior labial, which came from facial. Arterial supply of the pharynx. First, ascending pharyngeal artery. Where did that come from? This is one of the branches of the external carotid artery. Second, tonsillar artery. Where did that come from? From the facial artery of the external carotid artery. Third, 
ascending palatine artery, also a branch of facial, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. Fourth, superior thyroid artery, which is a direct branch of external carotid artery. And inferior thyroid artery, which is not a branch of the external carotid, but instead, the inferior thyroid came from the thyrocervical trunk, which came from the first part of subclavian artery. So, superior thyroid is not the same as inferior thyroid. Superior thyroid is a direct branch of external carotid artery, whereas inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of subclavian. Here is your daily reminder that the external carotid artery has eight branches. It gives a superior thyroid, lingual, and facial arteries from its anterior aspect. It will give us occipital artery, posterior auricular artery, and ascending pharyngeal artery. And then it will give us its two terminal branches, maxillary artery and superficial temporal artery. The arteries that are going to supply the pharynx include, of course, the ascending pharyngeal artery, the facial artery, and the superior thyroid artery. The pharynx is supplied by ascending pharyngeal artery of the external carotid, tonsillar and ascending palatine of the facial of the external carotid, superior thyroid from the external carotid, and inferior thyroid from thyrocervical trunk of subclavian. The larynx was supplied by superior laryngeal artery, which is a branch of superior thyroid, and inferior laryngeal, which is a branch of inferior thyroid artery. Don't forget that superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid, whereas inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyrocervical of subclavian. Pause and review. Quiz time. Can you pause the video and label these structures? Let me know your answers in the comments. Today we talked about the arteries, but how about the veins? Can you pause the video and label these structures? Comment below. If you want a video on the neck veins, such as these, please refer to my anatomy playlist. A topic that is of utmost importance for your exam is the foramina of the skull and the structures that pass through them. Don't forget that the carotid canal is for the internal carotid artery, the jugular foramen is for the internal jugular vein and other nerves, foramen magnum is for the two vertebral arteries, and the spinal arteries, one anterior and two posterior spinal arteries. The foramen spinosum is for the middle meningeal artery. Don't forget that the philosopher Baruch de Spinoza is an MMA fighter. MMA fighter, middle meningeal artery, is foramen spinosum. The optic canal contains the ophthalmic artery, which is a branch of the internal carotid artery. Before you leave this video, I want you to sit down, focus, and try to answer the following questions. Where can I find each of these foramina on the skull? And what are the structures that pass through each one of these? Please pause and review. This is very important. I talked about the skull foramina and the structures that pass through the foramina of the skull in my videos on the head and neck anatomy review, which you can find in my anatomy playlist or in my in 90 minutes quick review playlist. If you find these videos to be helpful, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. After mastering anatomy, you can master surgery by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. I have many courses on my website. Each one comes with videos, notes, and cases. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.